Hey guys, Pablo Picasso once said, everything you can imagine is real. And since Halloween is just around the corner, why not turning yourself into a real Picasso painting this year? It's a great last minute costume that is easy to make and will look great on any picture. To create the mask that is inspired by one of his portraits, I will be using the painting The Woman in Hat and Fur Color that he made of Mary Therese Walter, one of Pablo's partners. First, I sketch out the lines using the reference picture as a guidance, but you can of course create just a similar painting in his style. I used heavy watercolor paper because I didn't have any cardboard and I also wanted to use a white background as a base that is slightly bigger than my head. As you can see, Pablo Picasso captured different angles of the face, like the frontal view and the side profile into a single image in his signature style of cubism and surrealism. Some people say that Picasso's style of merging together the face, just like here in his style, is showing the picture of a woman who was suffering from internal conflict. I find it really interesting because it gives you an opportunity to think about the whole concept and meaning behind the art. Pablo Picasso used oil for his painting, but I will be using acrylic paint here because it will just dry a lot faster. I first set it out with bigger areas like the skin tone, which I created by mixing yellow with a little bit of white acrylic paint to soften the shade. And then I just evenly applied the paint following the original painting as a reference. For the hair, I used the same yellow shade that I mixed for the face, but this time I mixed it with a little bit of warm blue color to create a warm green shade. In order to create his artwork, I didn't try to blend anything super perfectly here. I rather focused on adding thick and bold paint onto the paper and making different shades look through from time to time. By mixing in different shades while applying the paint, you can create interesting textures and patterns that don't look super flat. And if you look at his painting more closely, you will be able to see areas where he applied a lot of paint that created texture and this is what I wanted to achieve here as well. You will also notice that the lines in his painting are not even at all. So some parts are thicker, some parts are thinner and I think this even makes the whole painting more interesting. A lot of people like art that is more realistic and that looks like a photograph, but I personally like art that is not super perfect or real. Where you can see brush strokes, uneven lines, abstract shapes, because for me, it gives you just so much you can discover and think about. If the painting is hyper realistic, it's amazing and I admire the artist that was able to create that. But to me, it's a little bit boring because it's just there already in all detail and perfect. I just personally prefer the more abstract art. What do you guys prefer and why? Comment down below and let me know. So for this mask, I just kept adding paint to all the different areas, making sure it looks similar to the original. I mean, you can totally just print it out onto a thick paper and you're done, but I think it looks a lot more real and spooky when you hand paint it. Now once everything is dry, you can cut out the head and the face. Since we also want to see something through the mask, you can use a pencil or something else to poke through the holes in the eyes. You can make them as big as the pupil or the whole iris, depending on if the space is enough for you or not. Cut off the excess paper on the other side and then what you can also do is you can use a black marker to adjust a few black lines if necessary. Now, to be able to wear it on the face, you can attach some elastic band or a ribbon using hot glue. I made sure that the band fits around my head and then I attached it right next to the eye area. If you notice later that the ribbon is too wide, you can just make a knot. To make the whole costume a little bit more complete and cohesive, I used face paint and applied it to all the areas I wanted to color. So I added yellow paint to my neck, hands and arms to make them match the skin tone of the mask a little bit more. And I also added more details like a few lines on the shirt, above it and to the neck so it kinda looks similar to the original painting. And because I didn't want to ruin my clothes, face paint is great because you can just wash it off later. And because my head was still looking through my mask because the head area was a little bit too small, I just used yellow fabric that I put onto my head, but you can of course upgrade the whole mask with a wig that has this green hair or use fabric the same way, whatever you prefer and is easier for you. This should just give you an idea that you can build on. 
I think it's a great costume if you don't have much time left or just don't feel like putting too much effort into it but you still want to stand out looking special and spooky. What do you guys think? Let me know. Comment down below and let me know if you want me to transform into another painting in the future. For more Halloween costume ideas, you can check out these videos right here. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!